Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. And in our continuing mini-series on joinery, we're going to be talking about a doweled butt joint. So, a butt joint is simply when you join one piece of wood to another piece of wood. And in previous episodes, we've talked about different ways of doing that. But now we're going to do something that's a little bit different um, for a specific occasion. It's all very well to do what we did before. Just make sure that the edges are square and smooth and then glue them and join them together. But if you've got really long boards, like say I was making a big table that was as big as the whole bench here, I would need something else. And that something else would be to use a series of little short dowels all the way along every six, eight inches or so. And what that does is to guarantee that not only do the two pieces come together, but that they come together in the same plane. So a doweled butt joint is really good for tabletops, bench tops, uh, anything that's really long. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the first thing, of course, uh, as I mention this a lot, is to make sure that the edges of the boards that are joining together are both square, assuming that you're working on a flat surface, and perfectly straight. Just a brief recap, the way to do that, the easiest way to do that, is on a shooting board with a square shooting plane, and just take a shaving like that. That guarantees, because of the right angledness of the plane and the squareness of the wood, that guarantees that the two surfaces, the two edges, are going to fit perfectly. But remembering the fourth great rule of woodworking, which is that if you're joining two or more pieces together, you can save yourself a lot of possible mistakes by marking how the pieces are going together. Now, I've already marked these two pieces. I've decided that I want these two pieces uh, to go together this way. And so, if you look closely, you can see right here that I've drawn a triangle. That guarantees that I know this is the surface, this is the surface, and that this one goes here like that. If I hadn't done that, to repeat what I mentioned before, look how many ways I could get that wrong. I might do this. I might do this. I might do that. There's all sorts of ways of doing it. So the first thing that you do, once you've decided how you want the pieces to go together, is to use a mark, right? And I like the triangle mark, but you can write A and B or whatever you want. The next thing to do is to insert dowels, little dowels like this every, I don't know, six, eight inches or whatever, the entire length of the board. I'm just using two short pieces here to demonstrate the doweling process, but remember I said this technique is particularly good if you have a really long surface and you want to make sure that they not only come together this way, but they come together perfectly flat. That's what the dowels do. Now, we're going to be talking about a really handy little jig that Stanley makes. It's actually called the Stanley number 55, um, uh, 59, I mean, and it's called a doweling jig because what it does is, you'll see in a moment, it helps ensure that when I bore the holes for the dowels, they go in perfectly vertically and they go in at exactly the right place that I want them to go into. When you get a doweling jig like this, it comes with a whole series of little tubes here of different diameters so that you can use dowels of different diameters. Right now, I've got one that's big enough for these dowels. You can see that the dowels will just fit through there. So there's lots of little adjustments here, but what I do is start off, no matter how long or how short these boards are, I make a mark across wherever I want the dowels. That's, you can see these marks here, right? Then, putting 
the workpiece in the vise with the face side towards me. Remember the second great rule of woodworking, always keep the woodwork su supported. I now put the doweling jig on the board and you'll notice that there are two adjustments. There's this one here that allows you to move the tube so that you can guarantee exactly where you want the hole to go. And I go roughly a third of whatever the width of it is. And if you care about it, you can even see the little measurements here. But it's good enough to do it by sight. And you line up the mark on the front of the dowling jig with the mark that I made here. And then you tighten that and have that nice and straight turn this screw and now you have a device that will allow you if you're using a, an, an auger bit in this case that's exactly the same diameter as the dowel with a depth stop you have somewhere that will guide this in and two things i have to do the first thing is to make sure that the hole is going to be in the right place here and if I use this always on the face side, no matter how many dowels I'm going to put in, that will absolutely be taken care of. And the second thing is that I need to go down the same depth. You don't need to have dowels that are very long. This is just like an inch and a half or so. So half of it will go into one piece of the wood and the other half will go into another piece of wood. So the trick to doing that is to put the auger bit in the tube like this and then put the dowel here right and here i've attached a depth stop to the auger bit so that will guarantee how how far deep that i go right and i just do this until i hear the bottom of the depth stop running against the doweling tube. So I've done that in a couple of cases and you have a nice hole, have another hole here. Let's do one for real here. You can do the end one. So I put the doweling jig on, lining up the mark, make sure that I've got it exactly right. If you come, you can see carefully, there's a line here and I mark that line up against this line here. Whoops, and come around a little more. There it is. This is the trickiest thing to do. But once that's in place, I tighten this, put the workpiece in the vise, and then carefully insert the auger bit into the tube and simply I find it helps to put my head on it to keep it straight but I simply bore the hole until I hear the bottom of the depth stop rubbing against the top of the tube there you hear that now I know that I've gone down exactly the right depth take this out. I can make sure now that I get all the waste out of there. I find an all helps, especially if it's relatively small here. Now you can see the nice hole that I've drilled in exactly the right place, the same distance away from the edges here and the right depth. Now, I do the same thing with the matching piece. Remember, here's the top of the triangle, so here's the bottom of the triangle. So I have to do the same thing, always working from the face side. Put that in, put the dowel jig over, make sure the lines are lined up, tighten it, and bore the hole. Well, we've already done that to save time, but now we have matching series of holes 
that fit exactly from one piece to the other. There, you can, you can see that that's right. Right? Now, you could do that by hand. In the old days, I think people probably did. But this is a wonderful little device, quite apart from the fact that, as I say, it comes with a, a selection of tubes here that allow you to put in dowels of different diameters. Now, the next thing are the dowels themselves. Each dowel should be a little less than twice the depth of each individual hole. Right? So I can mark that. I've done that here. And I've put, marked it on here, and I will saw this off. See if this works very gently. And it helps when you're doing this to perhaps have a regular stop, but I made them all the same size. Now, a couple of other little tricks. For the dowel to go in, nicely, even though the holes, both sides, are a little deeper, so there's a little extra space, it helps if the end of the dowel is just a little beveled. So I can put that in, put this back in the vise here, and here I have a little chamfering device. You can see it's nicely curved, and it only takes a few minutes to go around like this, and now I have the end of the dowel nicely chamfered so that it will go in. I want to do that on both sides, of course. So I'll do that over here. Do the same thing. And now if I'd done all the dowels together, I would have my three dowels all the right length and all chamfered at both ends. One last little trick. Even though there should be space when the dowel is in, at either the top or the bottom, I want, and even though the dowel fits very tightly in there, I want to make a little glue line so that any glue that gets trapped at the bottom can find its way up. The easiest way to do that, little trick I learned as a carpenter, is to take the same brace and auger bit that made the holes here and make a hole in the end of my bench. I don't know if you can come over here and see this hole, but here's a hole and from this end here I've inserted a nail that just sticks into the hole so that I take a hammer and I push this through like this When that's gone all the way through and popped out the other side, you'll see that there's now a glue channel. Not a difficult thing to do, but really, really helpful. Now, making sure that I have the pieces lined up, I want to put a little glue in the hole, right, at the end, and then push in the dowel. Uh, I also, of course, want to put in a little glue, but not too much, all the way along. I usually do that first before the dowels get in the way. But if I do this, now you see how easy it is to get the dowels in. If they're all glued before you put them in. Now you can glue the other side. Sometimes I like just to put a little glue in the hole and then glue along here, and then this piece will now fit on top of here. And now I have not only a really strong joint, but I also have a joint that's completely lined up. Not flat, not coming apart, not doing anything. So that's a quick introduction to glued, doweled butt joints. If you want to know more about that, then 
one of the books that I've written is particularly informative on all kinds of joints, but especially on these. So you can find this if you go to my website. Um, I think it's up here. Uh, and if you like that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you have questions, I can't answer everything at this point. There's so many subscribers, but the more interesting ones I will personally try and do. Um, and I wish you a lot of luck before we come back next time with some more joinery. Thank you.